Hi everyone. Uh, this is the remaining part of the tutorial 10. Um, so during the tutorial, there was a technical difficulty, so we didn't manage to record the last part. Um, but I'm gonna do that, repeat that last part again for those who were not there in, in the in the class in person. So where we stopped um, at the tutorial is we were talking about the probability fluxes for reflecting and scattering states. And the case of the reflecting states we have fully discussed. And now we will discuss the case of the scattering states. So this is the exercise 2C. I'm slightly crazy thickness. Okay, uh, so what are these scattering states again to remind you? So suppose that we have the potential. Here, here I draw the, um, the profile of the potential. Um, depending on the position X. And the profile of the potential is such that before zero, it's zero, and for x uh, bigger than zero, it is constant, some v0. And then we have an incoming particle which goes into this, goes along the x-axis. And the scattering case corresponds to uh, the case when the particle can still um, easily travel, even in the part where there is potential. So this is the scattered part. And then there is the reflected part as well. Or in the way we call them, this is the incident wave. This is the reflected. And this is scattered. And for the scattering to happen, the energy or the particle has to be bigger than V0, which is the potential. And as we've seen in the lecture, the solution for this case um, for the wave function is the following. So for x less than zero, we have the same solution as for the um, case when, when the wave is reflecting. So for reflecting states, which for x bigger than zero die out exponentially, uh, we have for them the same solution in a region where the potential is zero. So this we write as just the superposition um, of two um, imaginary exponentials, complex exponentials, sorry. So a e to the power kl x plus b e to the power minus i kl x. So the first term corresponds to the, um, to the incident wave and the second term corresponds to the reflected wave. This is for x less than zero. And for x bigger than zero, we would also have the superposition of two uh, complex exponentials with different coefficients, c and d. Um, however, usually for, for, our, for um, the cases that we consider, we only want to um, to consider the, sorry, we only want to, um, we only want to consider that the wave is propagating forward after x bigger than zero. So we assume that uh, d equals zero. So this term, the second term, we don't take into the account. And sorry, the wave that goes through is usually called the transmitted wave. Um, okay, and the KL 
and KR are defined as follow. So this is square root two mu E over H bar and KR is square root of two mu E minus V zero over H bar. So these, these you can obtain which are solving the differential equation for the regions X less than zero um, and X bigger than zero. And this has been done in the lecture. So now we can calculate the uh, probability fluxes for regions X less than zero and X bigger than zero. And for region X less than zero, um, for scattered states would be the same as the probability flux for the same region for the reflecting states. Because this is basically the same, uh, the same solution that we are considering. And this we have calculated before, which is H K L over mu modulus a squared more minus modulus b squared. And again, just to explain, this makes complete sense because um, the part with the modulus a squared corresponds to the incident flux and the part with the b squared corresponds to the reflected flux. And of course, the, um, the net flux would be the incident flux minus the reflected flux because they have opposite directions. It's the same, you can think about this fluxes as, uh, for example, in the analogy of the water moving down the, down the tube. So there, if, there is, if, there is an, if there is a flux of water going down the tube and then there is a, and then there is a flux of water going up the tube, the total flux would be the difference between these two. Okay. Uh, similarly, because we don't consider this term for the X bigger than zero, one can calculate that the flux for X bigger than zero for the scattered states would be just H bar KR over mu modulus c squared because we see what we saw from the previous calculation for reflecting states each such complex exponential uh, contributes with this kind of factor to the flux and because on the for the region x bigger than zero we have only this exponential it would contribute with this term but you can also just, again, uh, conduct the same calculation, just coming out of the um, definition for the flux, uh, which is IH bar over two mu, deep psi star dx psi minus deep psi dx psi star, and just plug in uh, this term here. Okay, so this was about um, the calculation of the flux for scattering and reflecting states. Now let us proceed to the next uh, the next point, next notion that we will use, which is the transmission coefficient. So this is the part D of the exercise. So the transmission coefficient, as you might guess, is the ratio between the transmitted flux and the incident flux. Okay, and so for example, for the scattering, so, for, so first for the reflecting states, this transmission coefficient would be zero 
because as we've seen for the reflecting states, the flux for x bigger than zero is zero. So this would be zero. So T reflecting states is zero as J for reflecting states where X bigger than zero is zero. However, now let us look at the scattering states. So for the scattering states, the transmitted flux is non-zero as we have just seen. And so for scattering states, This would be the J transmitted. So which would be basically JX bigger than zero over JX less than zero incident. And J for X bigger than zero. So this is both for scattering states. Is H bar KR over mu modulus c squared over the incident flux is the flux which is given uh, by this term. Uh, and this is h bar kl over mu modulus a squared. So all in all, we get kr modulus c squared over kl modulus a squared. Analogously to the, um, to the transmission coefficient, we can define so-called reflection coefficient. So, so the transmission coefficient is the reflection coefficient. And the reflection coefficient is the reflected flux. Um, over the incident flux. So for example, for the reflecting states, this is one because everything that is, um, everything that, that comes to the, to the potential is reflected. Um, So now we can write it down for scattering states. So for the scattering states, this is j x less than zero, which is reflected over the flux, also for x less than zero, scattered case, which is incident. And the reflected flux is this term in the flux in the region for x less than zero. So basically what we have here is h kl over mu modulus b squared over h bar kl over mu modulus a squared which is just basically b squared modulus over modulus a squared. <clears throat> um, now we can let us show for scattering states the following. Um, so for the reflected states, this is for the reflecting states, this is obvious from definition already that the t plus r would give you one. Now let us show us the same property for scattering states. Um, so for scattering states, but okay, generally when you start thinking about this, this problem with some potential and the particle going oh, towards this potential, um, the int intuitively you can already see that um, Whatever, whatever incident flux we have, it should be separated into reflected flux and transmitted flux. And sh there shouldn't be anything left. Imagine a wave, which is a wave of water, which is just coming 
towards a particular obstacle. So then the all, all the amount of the water that reaches that obstacle is divided into two volumes. The first, the first volume is the uh, is the water which gets reflected by an obstacle. And then the second, um, the second volume of water is the one which goes over the obstacle. And there is nowhere else where the water can go. So basically then the, it should hold that the, sorry, it should hold that the reflected flux plus the transmitted flux should be equal to incident flux. And from this intuition, let us formally prove that T plus R equals one. Because if you sum T plus R in the denominator, you would have the sum of the transmitted flux and reflected flux. And the denominator, you would have the incident flux. And this ratio should give you one. Okay. So what do we have for the, um, for the scattering waves? Um, so again, let me repeat and write again here the solution uh, for the Schrodinger equation, which we'll be using. Let's see, e to the power of pi kr x, or x bigger than zero. Um, so to, to calculate the sum of the transmission and the reflection coefficients, we need to identify the, um, the relation between the coefficients a, b, and c. At least we need to identify their ratios. Um, to do so, we need to, um, we need to consider what, what are the restrictions that we put on this uh, wave function psi of x. And these restrictions or conditions are called as um, are so called born conditions for the wave function. And these basically say that the wave function has to be continuous, and also the derivative of the wave function has to be continuous. So the only the only point of non-continuity which we can encounter here is the point x equals zero. So basically here we need to impose that at the point when we, um, when we bind to get two together, these two parts of the wave function, wave function has to be continuous and its derivative has to be continuous. So basically what we have is that we need to write psi and psi, uh, psi prime of x, which is the derivative at the point x equals zero and then equate them. So the derivative of, of psi is the following. It's i k l a e to the power i k l x plus, um, sorry, minus i k l b e to the power minus i k l x for x less than zero and c i k r c e to the power i k r x. Okay, now I write them um, at, at the point x equals zero. So the Born conditions are the following, psi of zero minus zero. So on the left of zero is equal to the psi of zero plus zero. So on the right of zero. And this means that A plus B 
So the exponentials are both equal to one at x equals zero, equals c. Okay, and the second condition is psi prime left of zero is equal to psi prime right of zero, which means that IKLA minus IKLB equals IKRC. Okay, so now we have these two equations and I will get rid of the I here. So what I'm left with is KL A minus B equals KRC. And now let us um, express B and C via A. So let us first express B via A. For this, I'll just substitute instead of C here, A plus B. So what I would have is KL A minus B equals KR A plus B. From this, I can conclude that B equals A KL minus KR over KL plus KR. Okay, now let us uh, express C via A. To express C via A, um, let us substitute B here by C minus A. So what we'll get is KL 2A minus C equals KRC. From this, we can conclude that C is equal to A uh, 2 KL over KR plus KL. Okay, so we expressed B and C via A. Now we are ready to analyze the expression, which is the sum of the transmission and reflection coefficients. So T plus R equals, so here we have written them already. So here we have T, and I'm sorry for my mistake here. So this is of course R, and R we have here. So basically then their sum would be um, KR modulus C squared, plus KL modulus A squared over KL modulus A squared. Oh, sorry, uh, here it must be B because this is a reflective part. Okay, so now instead of C and B, let us plug in the expressions that we just discovered. So here we would have KR modulus A squared, KL minus KR squared over KL plus KR squared plus KL modulus. Okay, maybe I'll just put the plus on the other side. So here I continue. Um, so here I would have KL modulus A squared, 4KL squared over KL plus KR squared. And this is divided by just KL modulus A squared. Is this correct? No, this is not correct because I messed up these two up. So this is K, this is KL. Yes, because this is KL because this corresponds to this term. And here we have KR because it corresponds to this term. Okay. So now what I do, now I get rid of uh, KL modulus A squared. 
in the nominator and denominator. So this goes, this goes, one of these go, and this goes. And we are left with the following. Four kr kl plus kl minus kr squared over kr plus kl squared. And so what do we have in the nominator? We have four kr kl plus kl squared plus kr squared minus two kl kr over kr plus kl squared. And what we have in the nominator is exactly kr plus kl squared. Because we would have kl squared plus kr squared plus two kr kl, which is exactly that square. So then this is one, because the nominator is equal to the denominator. So indeed, we have shown that transmission coefficient plus reflection coefficient gives us one. Uh, and indeed, this entirely suits our initial intuition, um, knowing that the flux cannot go anywhere. It can only separate into, um, it can only separate into the reflected part and the transmitted part. Okay, so this is more or less everything I want to. Uh, I talked about in the in the tutorial. So the last exercise, the exercise three, you would need to find the exact expressions for the reflection coefficient for the scattering states using the uh, the definition using the definition for um, b um, and a and all these coefficients that you would have from um, uh, from the lecture notes and also substitute uh, kl and kr uh, by the expressions that I, I also given earlier you would also need to show that um, in the limits of in the scattering states, when the energy of the uh, of the particle almost reaches the potential, then in that limit, the reflection coefficient is um, is approaching it is approaching one. So this is basically the case between. And this is the case when the scattering states uh, go into um, reach the reflecting states, and also. A uh, very interesting phenomenon, which you would also need to show, is that in a case where the potential is negative, so the potential is negative, and the and the modulus of this potential is much bigger than the energy of the particle. So just imagine that we have a huge well, huge potential well. So this is zero. This is v. Uh, this is x and this is v0. Um, and the modulus of v0 is much bigger than the energy of the particle, so the particle is somewhere here. Um, then in this case, when the, when the particle reaches the potential, it can still be reflected. So the, in fact, the reflection coefficient is approximately one. So we would go up to here and then be reflected. Um, this can be analyzed by just considering the reflection coefficient in that case. Okay, uh, please send me any questions on Moodle or via email if you, uh, if you want. And sorry for taking so long for to record this second part of the class. Thanks a lot.